Hi, this is Misha, and you all know my love for RPKs. So I've got a new one to share with you here. This is the Arsenal RPK-5. This is a semi-auto version of the Bulgarian so-called LMG. This is a modernized take on the classic RPK. And basically, it's just an RPK. But there are some differences we'll get into. This one is chambered for 5.56. Five, if you check Arsenal AD, Arsenal Bulgaria's website, they offer this in 762 by 39 as well as 556 NATO. They do not list anything for 545. Interestingly, they do have NSN numbers for these as well, so it appears to be a NATO option. So yes, the SA RPK-5. Let's see how she shoots. So this is the before scene. This is the SA RPK-5 as it comes in with the Bulgarian blonde wood furniture. You can see these are RPK specific lower handguard, upper to match, male receiver. We have a Type 3 style kind of fat pistol grip with the ferrule on top. It's checkered. It's pretty standard for most of their wood guns. And then we have the most unique piece. This is the RPK buttstock for a milled receiver. We've got the side sling swivel, the very classic paddle shape, and we've got the uh, top tang and the uh, bottom tang that you'd expect to see on a meld. We also have this bracket here. It's a little different. Typical tear-up door. And one other interesting thing that I noticed, this has the um, this kind of metal bit on the bottom here. I'm going to assume that's kind of a rest, so you're not just resting against the wood, kind of protect it, would make sense for when it was uh, sitting on its uh, on its bipod. See. Anyway, I'm about to get to work putting the polymer here. It's brand new. See, it doesn't even have the screw holes drilled yet on the stock. Typical saw pistol grip and typical RPK with the heat shield lower. Now this is a little bit different in the back for a milled receiver and unlike a Vepper this has a standard smooth upper handguard. So yeah, I'm going to get to work putting that on and we'll get back to the regularly scheduled video. Just that a little before scene with it as straight out of the classy arsenal box and yes it did have this hole in it straight from the uh, UPS but there it is we'll move on 
Alrighty. So we took her to the range. Also, you saw the original wood furniture this came with. And I have put this uh, modern synthetic fiberglass furniture on because it's a modern gun, so might as well go modern, right? Funny story about installing this furniture. It was brand new virgin furniture from KVAR. We have the modern polymer buttstock for the milled receiver. It has the top tang with one screw, bottom tang with two. It's got these ribbing in, in the side. They say it's for strength. I think it's just because they want to look cool. It has trap door for the cleaning kit. It's got a little bit of extra bracket here to reinforce it because of the sweep down. Also, I guess they didn't really have a room on the top for a screw. I was kind of wondering why they did it. I think it's because there's not really room there for a screw if you have their compartment, so it's easier just to have your top screw across the top. Now, on that wood set you saw, it had a bracket down here. I think that was for resting, so in case you rested the uh, butt against the ground. But with the polymer, there's not really a need. It's not going to wear away like wood, so there's not that uh, little bracket there. This is the saw type pistol grip. I actually really like this grip. It's a little larger than a standard grip. It's got a bit of ergonomic, not a full finger groove, but it's got a bump at the bottom to keep you from sliding off. It's got a bit of a swell here, a little indentation here for your uh, finger, and it's swept back. But it's more or less ambidextrous. Seems like it's maybe a little bit. Nah, I'd say it's pretty even, actually, for either handed shooter. A lot of ergo grips are right or left hand specific. So I really, really like the grip. Hand guard is a pretty typical, at least the lower RPK with the uh, stainless steel heat shield. Upper is very much like what we see on the AR M1 or M9, kind of flares out. And then to kind of complete the modern look, I put the kind of the arsenal muzzle brake on. This came with the muzzle nut. I really couldn't find evidence for what militaries were using, but um, I put this on because it was just in my parts bin and it's a cool brake and it's actually pretty effective. So, funny story. I got all this furniture put on. I had to drill the holes with my Dremel tool for the uh, stock. Got all that on. It went... Um, really well together no problems really putting anything on I didn't have to sand the hand guards to make them fit that they fit very tightly but there was no issues um, the buttstock I had to just do a little sanding in the socket it, it went on nicely so I got it all done I was picking it up kind of looking at my work and the bipod decided to be a fun time to spring open and hit me on the forehead um, it's just not a day working on an AK unless you get a little bit of blood. <laughs> it, it has to have its, its, its blood sacrifice. I thought that was funny. It didn't even hurt. It kind of shocked me. I wasn't expecting it, but um, yeah, there was no real issues. So yeah, I, I put this modern polymer furniture on because that's how, if you look at Arsenal AD's website, their so-called LMGs appear. But the SA RPKs in the U.S. have always shipped with the wood, the blonde wood. Now, I say always. I should kind of uh, go back. There was a brief period, 2011, 2012, when they were offering these with this furniture pre-installed. Why they still don't, because they have it in stock, I don't know. But anyway, they don't. But they have it so you can install it, and it's pretty darn easy. And this is military stuff and relatively hard to get. So, what do we have here, and how is this similar to, and how is this different from, an RPK? This is the SA RPK-5 meaning it's chambered for 5.56 NATO. In the past, they've done an SA RPK-7, chambered for 
6239 and actually very very briefly during that same time period I was talking about they did an SA RPK 3 chambered for 545 by 39 uh, those were the most expensive and hardest to get it seems like Arsenal Bulgaria really only offered the parts briefly and then that was uh, that was that like I said they're no longer offering 545 on their actual Bulgarian military website As with most of Arsenal's products, really all of the ones in Bulgaria and most in the U.S., this is on a milled receiver, hot die forged. They like to talk about how many hours it takes to make these. This does have the scope rail, which if you look on the Bulgarian site for the LMG is an optional upgrade, so it has that. It has the RPK top cover. It's worth pointing out that the original Soviet RPK was on a stamped receiver, 1.5 millimeter with the bulge trunnion to be sure, but they did not do them on milled receivers. Uh, the, the RPD was milled. When they went to the RPK, it was a counterpart to the AKM, and um, they, they were trying to make them cheaper and a little lighter, so they used stamped. Anyway, for that in history, we've got a full video. In fact, I just published it a week or so ago on the RPK and its variations. It's also worth pointing out that Yugoslavia did do a milled RPK briefly. But anywho, I digress. Like I said, we have top and bottom tangs like any milled receiver, so that's going to be different from a regular RPK. And because a milled receiver has tangs that sweep down, the buttstock has a slightly different angle. You notice it curves down and then kind of has a hump up. You don't typically see this shape on standard RPK club foot stocks. Also, this area down here is more rounded. So while it looks like an RPK stock, generally, the lines are different. And of course, it has this bracket here that I've already pointed out. The saw type pistol grip is unique to this gun, or arsenal at least. It's not really like the Soviet. Now the handguard, the lower, is very much like a modern Soviet handguard. But of course, it is made for a milled receiver to fit instead of a stamped. A little bit different in the back. And the upper is the kind of the modern Bulgarian. Obviously, we don't have a reinforced trunnion because milled receivers don't have a trunnion. We do have the RPK windage and elevation adjustable RPK rear sight. We do have a forged bolt carrier group. You'll notice that the bolt carrier itself does not have the lightning cut. More or less standard safety though. <clears throat> More or less standard gas tube and all that. The barrel is pinned in, not screwed. It is 23 inches and has a very interesting profile. It doesn't have many steps. It's got a step right here that goes down just a smidgen and one here that goes up for the gas block area, but it's more or less a straight profile. It kind of reminds me more of a Yugo barrel. That's because it doesn't have the bracket in the middle to retain the cleaning rod that you see on the Russian guns. It's just a slab side in a way. Notice there's no cleaning rod hardware here. Our front side is pretty typical mill of front side. And like I said, this is threaded 14 by one left hand, so anything will fit. Typically these will ship with just a muzzle nut, but you can put whatever on. Typically a bird cage would be more or less standard, but I don't know, I've got enough of these with bird cages, so I put this on. It's an authentic arsenal pattern brake. They actually developed this brake in the 90s, kind of for the U.S. market, but it's, it's a good brake. So it's appeared on several guns. Really, probably the biggest difference, aside from the barrel profile itself with this and a standard RPK, the LMG has a unique bipod. This is really a PKM or a modified PKM bipod. You'll notice there's a hinge here. And there is the same hinge on this side. 
So this actually is removable from the barrel if you drive out a pin. It's on a different bracket. There's no cleaning rod running underneath. So it has more rotation. Where's our cleaning rod? Well, our cleaning kit is in the buttstock and our rod is very interestingly three feet, a three piece affair held in to the leg of the bipod. Pretty unique. And I couldn't find really anywhere on the internet that talked about this. Aside from on Arsenal's website itself, it says cleaning rod in bipod, which is kind of vague. And it's odd because the rod they ship the SARPK with is a long single piece rod. So you can't install it under the barrel and you can't fit it in the uh, here. What it is, there's a bracket with a little push button spring here. Typically you want to use a bullet tip to get to this. Let me flip it over guys. It's a little sliding bracket though. Slide it up and then your three piece rod. Ah, there's one of them still in there, but you get the idea. It's a piece rod here. Comes out. And that's just held in by a little bracket. Pretty honestly neat and interesting concept, I think. And definitely very, uh, very different. And just, like I said, just that little bracket slides over the end. And this end is a little pocket, so it might rattle around a little bit, but really not as much as you'd think. And you could always put a little cleaning patch or like a little uh, canvas thing around this to keep it, but it doesn't really rattle too much. Not as much as the clippy. So yeah, the LMG uses more of a modified PKM pattern bipod than uh, standard RPK. Let me fold that up. The one thing I don't like is it holds together, but it seems like this clip is just a little weak. Like I said, you can kind of squeeze it, and I think that's the idea. It comes out, it deploys easily, but it also means it's a little bit weak on the holding together. And it has a little bit of flop to it, but yeah. And also like a PKM bipod, it's a little short. Even with this 30 round mag in, it tends to rest a bit, monopod a bit on the magazine. And that leads me to a good final point to talk about on this design. This is the 5.56 version, and it feeds from Arsenal's standard waffle mags. It comes with one black 30 rounder, the clears will also fit. Now for the LMG and 7.6239, they offer 40 round polymer waffle mags. But looking on Arsenal's military website in Bulgaria, they only list the 30 round for the 5.56. So this seems to be the standard mag is just the, the standard 30. They do say that recommended standard equipment are eight mags contained in four, excuse me, two pouches, although they call them bags, I think. But yeah, eight mags in total. For 5.56, they'll be 30 rounds, and for 7.6239, they will be 40 rounds. Definitely no mention of a 5.56 drum, and I couldn't find mention of a 40 or 45 round in 5.56. If anyone has first-hand knowledge of seeing one, please let me know. Now, not, not a 5.45 mag, I know those exist, but specific Bulgarian 5.56. Now, there is a Russian, 5.56 five, 45 round mag made by Molot, but yeah, that's different. So in closing, what do we have here? The SA space RPK-5 or-7 are actually assembled in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's why the receiver is not marked Bulgaria. But they are assembled using a virgin Bulgarian kit, including barrel, on a receiver that's done out here in the U.S., but it's set, uh, made from a Bulgarian forging. I don't know how complete or incomplete these come over, but the, the raw forging, the metal, comes from Bulgaria, and then it's finished out here in the USA. I think Arsenal uses a subcontractor to finish this out, at least they have in the past. They may do it in-house now, but I think these are contracted out. 
So everything is Bulgarian except part of the receiver work. And they're put together in the US by hand essentially. Even the finish is done and that's why these have kind of a shinier and honestly better, more durable paint finish. This used to be Arsenal's way of doing things. They did the SA space M-7, SA space M-5. They did the SA M-7 Classic, SAS M-7 Classic, which they still have a few of. They had a whole line of these that were essentially USA assembled on milled receivers using Bulgarian virgin parts. This is when Arsenal really became famous. They started doing this around 02. And then after the sunset of the assault weapons ban in late 04, that's when they really took off. And this was kind of the high point because every gun was put together by hand and inspected. Whereas our imports, like the stamped SLR series or the um, newer SAM7SF or SAM7UF, SAM7R, are imported from Bulgaria. So that's cool that they're Bulgarian, but it also means they're mass produced on an assembly line. And those guns do not tend to have quite as nice of a fit and finish. Although durability wise, they're still excellent. And for a collector, they're kind of neat because they are truly Bulgarian. Whereas this is really a US kit gun, just built on, and, you know, and sold under license from someone authorized to use the Arsenal brand name. These guns have a very smooth bolt. Even when brand new, they have a machined, a milled double hook trigger. Everything about these, any of the, uh, any of the milled arsenals is really just outstanding. This is a modern Bulgarian black sling. Typically these come with just a typical green sling and a cleaning kit and an oiler, the aforementioned long cleaning rod and the aforementioned magazine that's in it here. And they come in an arsenal box, which you saw in the little clip with the wood furniture, which is nothing special, but arsenal boxes never have been. Well, we specialize in AKs around here and I specialize in an unhealthy, unnatural love for RPKs and everything similar to them. So I thought bringing you an in-depth video of the Bulgarian LMG and the semi-auto Arsenal SA RPK wouldn't be a bad thing. This was kind of a New Year's thing. I thought, eh, what the hey, might as well do it. I've had these in the store before, but never really taken one out and shot one. So no time like the present. Speaking of the LMG, like I said, there is the military version. It's select fire, safe, semi-full. It has this fixed buttstock. There's also the LMG F, which has Arsenal's kind of classic metal folding buttstock. So they do make a folding version of this. There's also a slightly modernized version called the LMG M4F that has the scope rail, night sights, and a few other modern upgrades pick rails are an option, so on and so forth. So this is very much something in the current Arsenal catalog as a uh, more, not so much used or marketed as a true LMG anymore, is more of a saw, squad automatic weapon. So yeah, hope you appreciated it. Hope you enjoyed tuning in. We definitely appreciate you tuning in. If this is after the new year, hope you had a good new year's and stick to your resolutions. Any questions or comments, please post them below. And if you could, check out our Patreon page. Like, share, subscribe. All the stuff that YouTubers always ask you to do. This is Nisha. And we will catch you next time.